Hallelujah. Well, I'm excited, and I, got, I feel like the Lord just wanted to set vision and uh, stir our hearts up, you know? It's important that, you know, I, I keep referring back to the Feast of Trumpets because, number one, it's coming on us pretty suddenly. But just to lock your mindset in, in an anticipation, one day the Lord will return. And, you know, a lot of times people are like, well, when it happens, it happens, you know, no big deal. No, it's a very big deal that you want to make sure that that's actually, you're living a life that is actually with, that's the end goal, that one day when the Lord returns, you know, a lot of times, you know, people are like, they say we've been in the end times forever. I'm like, well, at the end of the day, this is all you have, you know? Whether, I mean, this is, this is the last days you got, you know, it don't matter if it's 50 years from now, this is the only time you have. And you wanna, and what you do in this life literally echoes for eternity. Like, it's a big deal. And we wanna make sure that we live it in such a way that it is a big deal. You know, is the ultimate goal of a Christian salvation no, I, I assure you, that's not the ultimate goal is not just to be saved. That happens in an instant. So it's just like, the goal is to like, hey, I had a God encounter, I got saved, I'm in. Is that, is that why, why we're here? Is that the whole purpose? No, it happens on, in a moment, in, on day one. So obviously that's not the ultimate goal. That's what Jesus paid a price for to restore us to walk in the original creation as Adam and Eve had it. But it's to walk in partnership. It's to walk in a real relationship with God. It's voluntary love. You know, there's many times people have had these, I've heard these conversations throughout the time. Why don't God, why did God give us an option? Why didn't he just like mandatory, you know, like make us love him, you know? No option of sin, no option of no disobedience, just, just robot, make me love you. Well, how many of you guys, how many of y'all want that? You don't want that. You know, I don't want man, you know, just robotic love from Courtney. I want that free expression. That's what makes it so beautiful. The unknowns of how you're gonna express your love to me. That, that, those are the things that just entice the heart. I'll tell you, there's this thing that came out back in the day. It was called Game Genie for the Nintendo. So what it was, Nintendo didn't have let me save my game where it's at. Then baby stayed on, we used to hide, make sure the light was off, we'd cook clothes over it so our parents wouldn't know that we left the game paused so we can continue our game. So you literally leave this thing on for like weeks until you beat these games. Old Nintendo games, you weren't beating them in a day. It was, long, I mean, it was just incredible. It was just so much frustrations. So then they came out with this thing called a Game Genie. You plug it in and you can look up your game and it had all the cheat codes. So now it's like I have unlimited life. Now I can't die. Then you, unless you fall in one of them spots that you can't get out of and it's just like, I gotta turn it off. It's, you know, but as soon as you do the Game Genie, the challenge is over. And literally the game that you used to like really push to go for, it's lost interest. That's what, man, like that, that's what you know, that mandatory love would be like. You would lose interest if it was a given. There's a mystery to love that the ways that, the, the unique expression that we have. And the Lord sets the standard, Jesus really lays it out in Matthew 23, or 22, sorry. It's the first and great commandment. This should be primary on every son and daughter's heart. And see, we've said this verse so many times, it's so dangerous to get over familiar with the first commandment. Uh, so Jesus says it like this. He says, uh, they're asking him, you know, what is the, what's the greatest commandment? And he says, hey, it's, 
You should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments, you can hang all the law of the prophets. So that means if you do these two things, literally love will compel you to continually grow in pursuit of God. But there's, there's a few little hangups here. It says you should love your God, uh, the Lord your God with all, with all your heart. Then that little all really becomes a big deal. And it should be your goal to make it, uh, he wants this to be first and he wants it to be great. I think it's important that are you making your love walk with the Lord great? In the things that, in the expressions that you do, are you making, are you making it great? See, I can make a, you know, me and Courtney can schedule a date night every Friday night. It would be on Friday, but you know. Every Friday night. We say, you know, and I, I can say, me, oh, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a priority in our marriage that we go on this date, we have this, this time with each other, da, da, da. But if I'm on the date and I'm doing this the whole time, yeah, so. How great is that? Have y'all been to a restaurant lately? What does it look like? That, that's all, it, the date night and things have, have been settled for, that's not great. You're eating a meal, getting full and going home and calling it a date night. There's no expression. The best thing you can do is put these suckers away anytime you're trying to go deep in conversation. If you're having conversation with somebody and they're constantly looking at their phone, they are not interested in what you're saying. You're wasting your time. It's, it, it, it's scientifically proven, I've been watching the little documentaries on these things, when somebody checks their phone, literally they're, they're, they are mentally disengaging. They can act like they're paying attention, but they are disengaging with your conversation, so you might as well just pause and let them finish. But as a Christian's goal, as a son and daughter of God, it is to make Jesus the expression of this love walk, the excitement that we've been redeemed, shine and make it first and great. I'm gonna ask you this question here. This is a hypothetical, all right? Play the game. We all know that G, this is our goal in life. You know, a lot of people are like, man, I just don't know what my calling is. This is 100%, no doubt, everybody's calling uh, as a son and daughter is the first commandment lifestyle. To love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. To make it first in your life, make it the highest priority, and to make it great. You can make things priority, but doesn't mean you're great at it. In my youth, hunting was a priority, but I was not great at it. Obviously, I was doing something seriously wrong because I went 74 times hunting and never saw a deer. I thought I was looking for like a mythical unicorn. I mean, it's like, do these things exist? And my buddy's like, this is a guarantee you'll see a deer. I go to that spot, the spot I've been hunting for like three weeks straight, they see deer, like, oh, eight came in today. I'm like, what? How's this possible? You can make it a priority, doesn't mean that you're good at it. It's important but this is the thing is, every, every one of us were created to be great at this. You were created to be a conqueror in this one. In this arena, you might not be the most athletic, you might not be the most musically talented, but you were created to be the great expression of God's love on the planet. Amen? So, as we're going into this, you know, these feast times and just the reality of your, this is, your life, this is your life calling to make it first and great. All right, my hypothetical is, if we all agree that the first commandment should be first choice and first thing in, every, in our life, right? Let's take that away. Let's make the first commandment second in your life. And then your family, your job, and your hobbies, number one. 
how much would your life change? How much would it look different right now? It's just a good pondering here. Because you, second, you're still gonna go to church. Church doesn't count, guys. Like that's the like least you can do for the kingdom of God is feed yourself. So you'd still go to church, because that's second. I mean, you're not, it's not like you just forget your family because you're loving God. But if he's post, if, if, you know, if we made our family first, and we made our hobby first, and we made our job first, how radically would your life change? If not a lot, then there's, there's, some, there's some scary things that we might need to consider. Is it still first and great? Just something that you need to think, of, it's a good one to ponder on. Because you're looking like, how would I love my kids? You know, how would I, and nothing changes. You know, how would I prioritize that? What, nothing changes. How would I love my husband better? How would my wife better? Nothing really changes. you might not be doing it as much as God wants you to do it. If the entertainment doesn't change, it might need, it might need to do some adjustments. You know, the, the word talks about guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of life. Guard your heart with all diligence. I tell you, if you want to be able to hear the voice of the Lord, guard your heart. You will never be able to hear the voice of the Lord clearly when you're taking in as much worldliness as, as the world does. It's important to make sure that at, during this time of fasting, you should begin to get a, a brighter spirit. And you should realize maybe I'm not gonna put that back on the top shelf anymore. It, it, I, that's a, it's done got too much of my time, too much of my energy, too much of my mind. Uh, you know, another one is the, 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 the lamp of the body is the eye. So it says if your eye is good, your whole body be full of light. It's very important what you look at. It's very important. So if we're doing our hypothetical, all the, you know, the, the Jesus stuff that you're looking at on YouTube and all that, that goes secondary. And now primary goes with all the worthless stuff. Would it change a whole lot? It's important to make sure that what you put in, you can, it will affect you. That's why it's guarded with all diligence. When you guard it with all diligence, you're, you're applying the first commandment first. That's, how, that's what you're doing. When it's not all diligence, then it's not first, and you're not making it great. It's important you know, to, to know that the last day's generation, when the Lord's return, the first commandment will be in 100% operation, the bride that's made herself ready. That there will be a group of people on the planet that are 100% committed in shining and loving the Lord with everything possible. They shun worldliness and grab a hold of godliness. And they're the most exciting people on the planet. They're not boring. The most, I think some of the most boring people on the planet are mediocre Christians. Because you don't get the fullness of going all in like the YouTube videos and all this where these guys are traveling the world and they're doing, all, it's all about their, their life. You'll never be that guy. But you'll also never be the one walking in freedom that sets other people free. So what are you? You're kind of like just the mediocre. Which Jesus says, I'd rather you be hot or cold than lukewarm. And I believe you can have lukewarmness, not just like, it's not either your, you know, Josh or Chan, you're either hot or cold or, I believe you can have lukewarmness in areas of your life. Because in just in natural uh, relationship, you know, we can be talking about with a person and you can realize like, wow, 
This, we, we off, t- we, the conversation just went off real. And what happens, we try to steer the conversation back and then you know what, you can track with that person. It's the same thing in lukewarmness as you, you have a moment where you're watching something, it's mixture and it's not edifying you. You know it's creating a lukewarm heart. This is not, if Jesus is looking over at your phone, would you hide it? If Jesus is, 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 is this is a, a video, you're like, all right, let's check this out, Lord. It's important to make sure that we don't have, that we're, you know, that we, have, we might have a lukewarm moment right there. It does have some effect, but it isn't based the rest of your, your day. We can have off responses, right? We can be a little snappy with each other. We can handle each other wrong. That's not the best response. But we don't hold each other to that. Man, you just lukewarm love me and I just can't stand it. We get over it. We see each other, you know, uh, uh, love keeps no record of wrong. So we, we love each other of who each other are as sons and daughters, not as our little weak moments. So we can't have this lukewarmness in areas that the Lord is saying, hey, you need to get rid of this. It's the most dangerous, it's putting you in a dangerous position because you see nothing wrong with it. At least hot or cold. When I was living for the world, I guess you could say, I knew where, I was not splitting hairs. I knew where I stood. It was a scary spot. And at that moment, I was willing to take the gamble. But knowing where I was, uh, you know, what, what I was living, and when you shut that door, that conviction, and it's just like, mm, it's a tough door to shut, and it's a scary walk to walk. It's miserable. But Christians, on the other hand, a lot of times, we will justify too much. We're not that spiritually mature to be able to walk in lukewarmness and actually have a bright spirit. Let's, let's make sure, you know, we were singing that song that so, talked about, uh, what was the thing? It said something about lies. The song today, it mentioned, does it break off lies or something? It's something, yeah, it says, doesn't say anything about lies? Help me out, somebody. I was singing it. It was playing. I don't know what it was. I was like, that's perfect for what I'm going to share. You think about it. Think about it. Um, because we do need to break off lies. Because you tell yourself probably more lies than anybody. I'm going to do this later. No, you're not. You just lied to yourself. Because you know you have zero plans to really make that happen. You know, I'm gonna really get, get, you know, we're talking to the Lord, we're feeling the conviction, and then we say something. With no follow-up, you just lied. You've made yourself, you have set yourself up to completely fail, right? It's important, you know, and a lot of times we uh, make things worse than they really are. It's like, it's not that bad. But we just made a little hiccup just huge. It's like, quit lying to yourself. It's not that big. It's not that important. So we make sure we break off those things. Amen? There it is. Boom. We, we got we to, I knew I was singing that thing. But so the focus of every person, everybody that loves Jesus This is God's heartbeat for you, is that you would make him first, that you would make him, in your sphere of influence, that you would make it great. In your home, with your kids, in your marriage, with your friendships, as the Lord's been talking about friendships, with your friendships, that you would make them great. That he wants us to be a set apart people, but we will never be set apart in the lukewarm behaviors. I'm not gonna say the lifestyle, because I, you know, I think it's more behaviors that affect it. You cut out a few little behaviors, 
I think everybody would be like, I'm pretty sure I'm fully convinced that God wants us to love him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Jesus said it, that this is the first and the great. Now don't be knocking it up to no 75 or nothing. All right, so 1 Corinthians uh, 11, 1. It was a big statement that I shared this uh, several months ago. Follow me as I follow Christ. It's important. Could you say that to, with a wholeheartedness? And this is what, when you follow the first commandment and you pursue it with a wholeheartedness, there shouldn't be no shame. You should be able to say, yeah, follow me as I follow Christ. Or imitate me as I imitate Christ. in every area of my life. You know, I believe there's areas that some of us super thrive in, and then there's other areas. Would you want them to imitate your internet searches or your YouTube video watches to justice or to a younger one in, in this place? If you want a childlike faith, you'll never have it by putting God, uh, worthless things in there. This is where God has to, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we are here to be disciple makers. And the only, you gotta look at the habits and the things that you do, that's what you have the ability to reproduce. You have no, you have no other uh, ability to reproduce something that you're not. You know, we hear this in evolution. Uh, a dog cannot reproduce a donkey. No matter how many times you breed them dogs together, it'll never reproduce a donkey. The same thing. You can't expect to reproduce something more than what, who you are. Because fake things carry no weight. Because everybody knows your story. You can say you're the most convicted and most godly man, but after somebody walk, hanging out with you just for a little bit, you know whether that, that magnet's gonna stick or not. It's like, no, that ain't, that ain't who you are. You can only pre reproduce of what you're putting in. So as we, you know, as we talked about, you know, our little hypothetical, we take the first commandment out and you put all the, you know, your family, hobbies, and job first. Does it change a whole lot? Well, if you're not putting God in, in first in all these areas in multiple times, it doesn't change a whole lot. You know, there should be time separate, you know, set apart for his will. But, it, you know, that, those would be those biggies that get removed. It's like, oh man, that's gonna be removed. That prayer meeting's gonna be removed. That, my personal time, my devotion time, th those things would be removed. Uh, the, the, the subtle outreaches of like, I'm gonna go reach out to so-and-so and develop this friendship, not because it's just, we got things in common, because I believe God has called us to develop this friendship. All those things would be getting removed. Boom, boom, boom. It's important that you make sure that we just have a good heartbeat where, where, where God wants us to, to go. So imitate me as I imitate Christ. That is the goal of everybody to be able to stand here and that is like, I'm defeated. No, you're conquerors. This statement is for you to be able to look at these mountains and say, yeah, that one, I got it, I'm taking that one. I'm a conqueror, I can conquer this. I'm a conquer. I'm more than a conqueror, I can conquer this. But if you don't have any goal, or, or, we're not beating or defeated. You gotta make sure you have goals that you're actually recognizing in this time of fasting, in this time of consecration, there should be some things renewing. You should be able to get clear vision to be like, yeah, that's gotta go. I have way more freedom right now. Why do I have way more freedom? Why is my prayer life increasing more? What would be stealing that? Why doesn't the word bring like revelation when I read it? Too much confusion. You know, one thing you have to be you know, careful with is you don't wanna take on ungodly counsel. You don't wanna listen to a lot of ungodly counsel. You know, because the world has a way of looking at things that's not God ways. Psalms one makes it very clear. We don't wanna sit in that seat of the, uh, on the ungodly. We don't wanna hear their counsel. 
because I was talking to a guy the other day and I could tell this guy listens to a lot of news. And it was sad to me. Literally, this dude just sold his birthright. Literally, I mean literally an inheritance. Sold it because the fear of the government taking it. It's like, ouch. But he really wanted it. Like he really, but he was just, he has such a negative, negative, negative view, which I would say, if you're looking at the world's perspective, boy, how you can eat a bowl full of negative all day long. But we gotta have, make sure we look at through a God perspective. That he ain't forgot us, he ain't forsaken us. That we're his, and, and this dude's a believer. We're his, and we'll be protected, amen? But I was just kinda like, oh man, I hate to hear this. This is, a, I mean, I feel like you just got stolen. We wanna make sure that you gotta put in the sweetness of God's word. And if you're munching on everything the world has to offer, this is like a stale cracker. After eating a buffet meal, I'll pass. That's what it is. There's no way somebody can say, man, I just enjoy the love of the, of the word. I just, man, it just ministers so much. If you just dined on the world constantly, there's no way you can eat this. There's no way you're gonna be able to hear what the Spirit is teaching you. It's important that we make first and great. We make the word of God first and great in our household. Make it first and great in our homes, amen? So there are certain things as we are conquerors, you have to look at them like, you gotta go down. Now that I'm terrible, dude, I just went on a YouTube binge, and I'm terrible, I've gotta watch every Netflix thing there is to watch. We're not talking about shame and condemnation, just beating yourself up how pitiful you are. Believe what God has said about you, that you're conquerors. He realized that you would be born in the darkest age of all time, that you would have un, uh, un amount, uh, so much access to all ungodliness right here at your, on your phone. And he says, you'll overcome it. I put it inside of you that you would overcome. You would have every access to every little uh, hobby hack that, there's, that you could indulge yourself in on all time, but you're gonna know how to keep a limited supply. You're gonna know what, what's too much. Have you ever found out like when you just got on a hobby and you're just like eating everything, and then after a while it's like, it's just too much. I, I just, I got more than knowledge than I'll ever have used right now, and you just gotta turn the spigot off. This is where the Lord wants us to be ones that walk with the Spirit of God. Jesus said it was better for him to leave that we would receive the Holy Spirit. And he says he will teach you all things. Are you being led and taught by the Holy Spirit all things? Or a lot of times Luke Lawrence just turns that, vow, that, that ear off. It can't hear, it can't define what's hot or cold. It's just, man, this, this is all right. You know, Chan broke it down on discipleship that was excellent. You just gotta go back and listen to it. And I encourage you, because these things was what, to, to walk out the first commandment, God wants you to take your discipleship serious. Men and women gave up their life and everything for it. Has everybody watched the Chosen series yet? From disc one to disc two, season one, season two. Homework assignment. Watch it. Finish that series before you finish anything else on TV. It's simple as that. It's like, hey, I'm not gonna watch TV until I finish this series. It is so impactful. I, I have never cried more in any series in my entire life. And I'm not just a crybaby. I do cry at Mulan and certain things like that, but you know, <laughs> it just touches me differently. But the one that I love the most, I'm getting to watch this, this, this TV show that I'm listening to these stories, I'm like, oh my gosh. But I, I will say, if, you, if you've been dining on a lot of worldliness and you watch it, you're gonna be like, eh, 
It's all right. You know, it's a, it's a heart indicator. There's no doubt. Where your heart is, if you can watch it and not shed a tear, you have something going on inside. There's no way. It's important that, you know, they say a picture's worth a thousand words. What about, like, how many episodes? Like 17 episodes, 20 episodes? Man, they're speaking to you. <clears throat> I love, you know, I don't know. My dad always called them liquid words when tears run down your face. It's like, when I'm seeing him set people free, it's like, that's my Jesus. It's just like liquid words. I can't put into words what I'm feeling. It's just, so the, the body just lets them come down your face. More than conquerors. I encourage you to make sure we're not blind that there's areas in our life that need to be conquered. You know, I, it was a pep talk last, last week, but this, this, this is a, you gotta make sure we're more than conquerors. You need to make sure there are certain mountains that need to go down. Because we wanna be that generation that loves him and makes it first and great. That we're fully convinced as forerunners that this is our wholehearted goal. Number one, it will be the body of Christ as a whole. At one, at one particular point in time, everybody will be fully convinced in the first commandment and sold on it. Not how big I can get my ministry, who can, you know, how much influence I have. I'm an influencer, you know, so like, you know, sign up and get my email. And tell, let, me, let me tell you how important I am. The body of Christ as a whole will be like, this is, this is what I was made for to love God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength, my neighbor as myself. As I continually pursue the love of God, he will keep renewing my mind. We gotta remember, it comes at a cost. And that's, that, that thing, that is what we all realize, love in Jesus comes at a cost. Because he says, your life is not your own. But I like kind of picking and choosing, right? Don't we like picking and choosing? But he says, hey, your life is not your own. That was part of the deal, Josh. You wanted all that shame, condemnation, all the accusations to come off of you. You wanted eternity with me. The deal was, you gotta, you gotta love me with all. The deal was, your life is not your own, that you were bought with, your, uh, with a price. So no longer, there's, we shouldn't just pick and choose and just ask God to bless it. We wanna walk in heavenly assignments. We wanna be people that can reach out and disciple others. But most people you try to disciple are the ones that don't wanna be discipled. I don't know why that is. We're always pulling for that squeaky wheel that is like, dude, that might have made up his mind. He don't wanna come in. But you have all these others, and most of the time they're younger than you. 90% of the church right now is from people that grew up in church from six to 13 that gave their heart to the Lord. 90% of the body of Christ, that's what makes up the body of Christ right now. From six to 13. If, you, if, most, if most people, they don't make that decision between there and there, they ain't making it. Small 10% are the ones that get saved after their 20s, 30s. It's important that we make sure that we are good stewards of what God's given us. Amen? I mentioned this one too, you know, we, that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. I believe the first thing you need to try to do is knock out poor expression. It's the thing you do every day. You're constantly expressing one thing or the other. Whether you're mad, sad, glad, happy, it, you're expressing. So the most important victory right now is not like, man, I, my, I can, I can, I'm gonna get, 10 people saved this year, 100 people saved. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to that funeral and raise that person from the dead. It's like, let's hold back, raise her for the dead guy. Let's just, how about raising a smile or a positive conversation, amen? It's important to make sure 
We set our goals, we need victories. So you have wholehearted guys that get caught up and like, I'm gonna do something for God. They do something, they go and pray for a few people and you know, randomly attack people on the street and they get negative feedback and they're like, well, you're gonna burn in hell. You know, it's like, man, glory to God, I at least sowed a seed. You know, it's like, then they get like negative feedback. So that won't last very long. I remember a guy telling a story to my dad and he's like, I told him he's gonna, he's sliding down a greasy, uh, this greasy pole to hell. And it was like, my dad's like, you need to hold back on the greasy pole from hell part. You know, like you need to reel it in a little bit, bud. But he was just so intense. It's important that we get, I can do all things, but nobody believes that because you, I mean, if you can't get victories over your smile or pushing through a tough situation that's not even that tough. You know, we watched uh, Torch Lighters, another homework assignment. Anybody watch Torch Lighters? Dude, this is our inheritance. You gotta watch Torch Lighters. And I will say, Perpetua is like one of my, that one don't get you. Come talk. Something wrong there. <laughs> All right, so torch lighters is our inheritance as brothers and sisters. The Bible says we overcome what? By the blood of the lamb and the word testimonies. These are brothers and sisters that paid the ultimate price for their faith and didn't back down. Perpetua is like, she is the daughter of the mayor in this, in this town. She gets saved underground church, she just had a baby. I'm talking baby, baby. Well, they get raided, she gets caught. Her dad works a deal and is like, look, they're not gonna kill you. All you gotta do is go up to the, the, the emperor, dude, and, and throw some incense on their false god, and it's squished. Those that don't are gonna be fed to the, the beast in the arena. And you just have to watch the rest because awesome things happen. It was recorded in history. It's like the, one of the oldest recordings of a woman like making her stand for faith. The jailer actually got saved in the process and he like, it's incredible. So I encourage you to watch the, those things right there. They ought to put a little bit of fight in your spirit. It's like this girl, number one, has this baby and her dad is pleading. Like think about your All right. Well, anyways, it's important about our testimonies. You know, with the whole perpetua and stuff like that, it is not necessarily, it is super moving, but it shows you like the all in this. And with our weak, and I say this, we have a weak culture in America. Would you say that? Our culture is pretty weak. We don't. They flop from what is a standard to another standard. We have a weak culture, number one, I'll take it, making, they flop this way and this way, but guess what? The church flops this way and this way. So the nation is the standard of the, uh, will reflect what the church is doing. We can't blame Biden. We can't blame the Democrats. It's fun to do, though, because we always want to blame they're crazy on everybody. You know, it's like, the nation's crazy because they're crazy. Well, it's crazy. What's crazier, knowing the truth and denying it or being completely blind and bumping into walls? To know what is right and wrong, but choosing the weaker than to not know, any, not, not know anything and, and just babble whatever comes out your mouth and you're, one day you 
say this, the next day it says, I didn't say that. And then you say this, and that's what they're, they're, that's what they're gonna do. But for us, we need to be fully convinced in the truth, in the life that God wants you to live. That he, he's paid this price, number one, for wholeheartedness because he wants a family, amen? And we got born again into the family of God, walking in relationship. Think of your closest relative. How wonderful that is. Think of your least favorite relative. Y'all have nothing in common. Which one do you think God wants? He wants a family that is fully in love. See, our family showed the dysfunction, right? God's family should show what it's actually supposed to look like. All right, so we're talking about reproducing. It's, I'm, I'm really just going over like what I've been sharing. It's important that we stir up the flames. Uh, all right, another homework assignment. Y'all writing these down? What is it? Torch lighters, check. Chosen, check. You may be squirting some visine in your eyes, making them tears, take a picture. It's coming, Dan. <laughs> Psalms 101. One through eight. It is like it is like a, a theme inside my heart. You just gotta eat this one up. I you know, I just love saying these things. I will I you know it says I will pray, I will sing praises. Check. I will behave wisely and in a perfect way. And it just continually so it'll just drop bombs throughout this one. And it's just like, you wanna, you wanna be able to say this, I'll, I'll, I'll behave, I'll walk in a perfect way. I'll walk in a perfect way. With a perfect heart. He just goes on and on. It's just like, these are the decrees you wanna say over your life. Amen? So that's a, another little homework assignment. I'm not gonna go into all that. Focusing on godly friendships, number one, it's a, it's a real key component. Partnerships thrust you forward. In whatever area, when you have, you know, when you have like the, per, like, say like a, uh, the elite fighter, in the ring he's by himself, but not really. He has a coach that's telling him to do this and doing that and renewing it. Every great person has great people surrounding them, period. People that are gonna say, hey, you're created for more than that, Josh. There's more inside you, Chan. There's, Travis, you're set apart for righteousness. Barry, you're created to push the envelope. That's, you need people speaking that in your life because you know what? You don't always believe that about yourself. Many times, great athletes didn't believe that about themselves, but they had a coach. Mike Tyson, one of them. He had, a, he had this old man that was a coach that believed that he would be the great. And he drove it. He adopted Mike Tyson into his family, old white guy, adopted him in, loved him, took care of this thug teenager, and cultivated him in. And he said, I don't want you ever to say that about yourself. You're gonna be the greatest. And he'd always like, when Mike says, I, you know, man, I just can't do it. This dude would eat him alive. Don't you ever say that about yourself. You'll be the best. They'll remember your name forever. I mean, just constantly drilling it in them. You gotta have brothers and sisters that believe you like that, even in your weak moment. I, I, you know, it's easy to get the high fives when you just did everything right. It's another thing, you gotta have somebody that says, you gotta believe in yourself. Amen? Hallelujah. So godly friendships, why are they so important? They will help thrust you in the first commandment. Discipleship, it will help thrust you in the first commandment, amen? See, we get this opportunity in this life to do a thing called voluntary love. 
There will be a day, the Bible talks about, where every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. It's no longer voluntary. There would be no doubt that everybody will realize that Jesus is the King of glory. He was who he said he was and he was worthy as much as he was asking. And they will all bow. That's mandatory respect and honor. Everybody will give that one. We get the opportunity of voluntary. And this is the one he's looking for forever. So we get this opportunity to show the continual wisdom and beauty of regarding the first commandment as the priority of our life. This, is, this should be the theme of everybody. We're, we're called to be great at loving God. And that will shine differently out of each one of us. That's what's cool about our fingerprints. But it is what every man is called to do. That thing that wants to be great, it was created for this. It gets misled, and throughout our life, we have these impressions of what greatness is. You look at the Torchlighters series, these mugs are gonna be called great in the kingdom of heaven, but their life was really not that special. A lot of them. These mugs go through crazy sufferings, but with this wholehearted abandonment to God. In the world's eyes, they're called failures. Like, if, he if she would have just thrown a little incense, she could have, like, lived out her life and discipled her daughter and got to do this. But that level of compromise, a lot of times we underestimate it. it the Bible says a little leaven leavens the whole lump. That little bit of compromise, it just doesn't always stop where you want it to stop. One time, we, uh, me and my brothers and every kid in the neighborhood, for about two weeks, pried on this boulder in California. We're up on this like mountain. We'd go up there and we're prying. We have crowbars and big old levees. It was right there teetering on this huge drop. And we're like, ah, ah. One day, that baby went. And I'm talking a boulder, huge thing. It was just barely teetering on the edge. I mean, an earthquake would have shook it right off. But all, there's about 15 boys just jumping on these things and trying to get that thing rocking to go. And that sucker went, and we're like, yeah! And it kept going, and kept going. The next thing you know, it is blasting through trees like they're toothpicks. And it's just like, boom, 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 boom. I mean, it's just leaping and bounding. It's like, yeah! Then it's like, oh, there's houses at the bottom of this, hill, of this mountain. And it's like, oh! We, we, you know, we were excited to let it drop, but we didn't, get to, we didn't get to tell it when to stop. And there's this huge swimming pool right at the base, and it's headed straight for it. And it, everybody's scrambling out. We're running away from the, I mean, it's just going down the hill, wiping out everything. It stops like two feet from the smashing in these people's fence and going in their pool. It was like, Oh, my dad's gonna kill me. <laughs> I mean, that's all I can think of. But we got away with it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's so important, you know, to seize those moments because, you, you know, compromise, you just don't, it's a slippery slope. It just doesn't stop as quick as you want it to stop. You just don't recover as quick as you thought you were gonna recover. That's why it says, whoa, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. You gotta start over a lot of times. That batch is done, you're gonna, you know, ain't no picking it out. Hallelujah. I do want, Chan, I think we're gonna have to hit a first commandment series and just wear it out. It, I mean, I don't know who's all gone through the first commandment series. By Mike Bickle, it's like 10 parts, but he's, just, he's got a bunch of them. There's no doubt, you go through this, you'll be more in love with God afterwards. This dude, you know, thri you know he's, he's been wholehearted forever. And he talks about, you know, refocusing on, a, uh, on week, you know, every couple of weeks, he has to make, make it a, a primary thing, because it, 
You can drift. You can drift on ministry opportunities. You can drift on money opportunities. You can drift on, you know, pleasures uh, just of, the, of, the, of this life. You just, you just gotta keep realigning it. The dude that the Lord chose to establish the International House of Prayer, which started a prayer revolution in, our, in the world. I love this sharing these facts, but. And in 1983, there was two houses of prayer in the world, two. And a house of prayer is people that pray for the returning of the Lord and pray for things of the nation, that this, these ministries do it 24-7, 365. There was two. Now, there's over 10,000, I think it's like closer to 20, but worldwide. Prayer is increasing. The bride is raising up these, I mean, 24, there's over 10,000 of these that 24 seven prayers are going up. That's impressive. In 80, 80, 83, there was two. Now there's over 10,000. That's exciting. That guy that started all that has a huge influence, has to realign his heart on a, every couple weeks for the wholehearted commandment. I'm feeling pretty good right now. <laughs> so I just encourage you to take some time, ponder on the things that God has, you know, you are conquerors, but you gotta realize there are certain mountains. I love, you know, Caleb, when he goes up in the, you know, when he's, it's finally his opportunity to enter into the promised land. He's 84, something like that years old. He don't point out, he don't pick the little green meadow. Your boy picks this place that has giants still in it. They were supposed to be the most dangerous ones and the biggest. That's my mountain. That's the one I want. That's the, one, that's the inheritance that he chose to have for himself. He wanted to go in and get that one. I just encourage you to have that same heart. You gotta make sure you are conquerors and we realize you can study your life, you realize there are mountains that do this to you and you go back up and they, they drag you down. There are things that you wanna disciple people. There's other things you, you're like, I don't want that to reproduce in other people. It's been a snare for me. Well, you have to get out of the snare. You're a conqueror to do it, amen? Using God's strength to free yourself from poor expressions. It's important that God's people shine. It's important that people know where you, who you love, who you are, not because you say, I'm Danny Hall, I'm a Christian, I'm saved by Jesus Christ. You ought to get a, get a, get a, get a glass too. It's refreshing. <laughs> you know, it's important that you shine. There's a, there's a thing about your countenance. There's a way you live and conduct yourself and how you make people feel important. Has God made you feel important? You need to make people feel important. He created them. You ought to compliment them. You ought to talk to them. Amen? In the, in, in the, in the, in the generation where everybody in public's doing this, you need to say hey to people. It's amazing when you break the ice how like people just, oh wow, they'll join right in. We gotta be those people, amen? Hallelujah. Well, let's, uh, let's take some time. We're just gonna pray for a second. And what are we praying for? That we do something with what the Lord shared. That you'll believe in the conquering spirit that he gave you, that you'll believe that. That you'll believe that you were created to make the first commandment first and great. You're gonna make it first First in your life, amen? And make it great. And just allow that to soak in. What is God's dream for your life for it to be first and great? Can you imagine the king of glory calling you and giving you this assignment? He wrote it down for us, but just hear the Lord say, Danny Hall, I called this your assignment, that you're created, I formed you in your mother's womb to make this first and great. Got a little confidence on that one. You gotta wear it. 
Because you're conquerors, God's given you everything to do to make this happen. No more brain dead Christianity. Everybody knows their calling? What's that? Come on, Josh. You know what, I was listening to my dad preach a little bit and I could hear everybody else preaching. I love a little feedback, you know what I'm saying? I love the feedback. Tammy gives the feedback, you know what I'm saying? I, I love a little, amen. It's important to let you know that, you know that, that strength I'm talking about that for expression? It's important to be expressive. It's important to be interactive. Hallelujah. You ain't gotta get crazy and do a jig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just let me know you're with me. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, I do. I just wanna take this time, Lord, and just say search our hearts. As we're in this time of fasting and just preparing our heart, Lord, and just allowing you to awaken things up, I pray, Lord, that, that you would awaken the first commandment in everybody's heart in this place. That this was the first and great. This is the thing that you said was the most important. You pursue this, you will no doubt accomplish your purpose. It will lead you into all things, all these truths. Walking in the fullness. Lord, I just pray that, that you, you, you have set a seal on this house, that we are more than conquerors. That we can overthrow poor expression. We can overthrow poor reactions to situations that we're created to be able to cut off things with no regret because we realize that whatever we give to you, that you will give it back. Your word says a hundred times in this life that there's so much more for us if we'll just trust you with the worthless things. And Lord, I just pray you begin to set a seal that, that great, that everybody in this room has the ability to make your ways great. Now just break off every lie that you got the second hand, you'll never be this, you'll never, you're not special. Lord, that we're yours, we're the most special people on the planet, that you created us, hand selected us to shine in this hour. And we are all created to, be, to, to manifest your love and make it great. I pray, Lord, that you just grant us a heart of conviction in this house, a drive, Lord, to, to repent and turn to your ways. That I, we're just not here to do the salvation thing. We're here to, to do, advance the kingdom of God, to be the body of Christ, to be the family and the bride that's made herself ready. Lord, I pray that conquering spirit, Lord, will rise up in every family right now. That there would be targets for each person in this place. That thing's going down, because I'm a conqueror. That we're here to possess the land. We're here to grab a hold of our inheritance this year like never before. But knowing that there's a fight, but the battle's already won. And being convinced of that. Your ways work, and we just thank you for this opportunity, Jesus. We love you. We love you. Amen. Thank you, God. I love you guys. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to share and to be able to run this race with you. You guys are gonna be in good hands. I'm going on vacay. I know somebody's gotta suffer for Jesus. Uh, you know, I'll be in Destin. <laughs> there we go, what's up? It's gotta touch the right things there, I guess. Uh, yeah, but Josh is gonna be laying it down for you, uh, uh, for you guys. Super, it's gonna be super epic. Don't, uh, don't miss it. Uh, uh, Mike, we want that one fresh off the press as soon as possible. All right, love y'all. Be blessed.